It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Thorat's here. Mary Jo Foley's back. We're going to talk about the release of Microsoft's biggest phone on Easter Sunday, uh, a roadmap leak about Windows and Office 15. And uh, Gartner says Microsoft's share in the tablet space will be woefully small next year. We'll talk about it next on Windows Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E. F-L-Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Thorat and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 256, recorded April 12th, 2012. Cranky Birds. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Ford, featuring voice-activated sync app link. Now you can control select smartphone apps with your voice, helping keep your hands on the wheel and your eyes on the road. Learn more about the technologies Ford is bringing to its vehicles at Ford.com slash technology. And by Go to My PC. Take care of last-minute requests from anywhere right from your phone with the Go to My PC app for iPhone. Visit GoToMyPC.com for your free 30-day trial. Use the offer code Windows. And by Hover.com. Hover is domain name registration and management that's simple. Upgrade to a premium domain and trade in your old clunkers by visiting windows.hover.com. It's time for Windows Weekly. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, you know what I'm going to do, Paul and Mary Jo? I'm going to come up for every market. show with a signature, a trademark introduction that I can patent, like that guy who said, let's get ready to rumble. He actually patented that. You can't use I couldn't use yeah, that. Yeah, no, I know. He'd I know. sue me. So it's time for Windows Weekly. Here he is, Paul. I'm sure that's not different enough. <laughs> in the gray, in the gray, <laughs> in the gray trunks, and I don't know what he's wearing for pants, but in the gray trunks is Paul uh, Thorat, ladies and oddly gentlemen. Oddly enough, yes. Let me. Uh, I will show you something. This okay. is a little embarrassing. Yeah, he's wearing shorts. Of course, he is. In gray trunks. I didn't even know that, and I got it right. All right, let me see if I can guess what Mary Jo's wearing. <laughs> Maybe I better. Uh, not. No. <laughs> 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 Paul Thorat is uh, for the super site for Windows, winsupersite.com, and is, right, is the author of many great Windows Secrets books, including the new one, which is on its way, Windows 8 Secrets. Mary Jo Foley is here on the right. She is, of course, the prolific blogger at allaboutmicrosoft.com, who keeps track of all of Microsoft's foibles in great detail. And between the two of them, there ain't nothing that goes down in Redmond that they don't have their finger on. Usually the middle finger. <laughs> <laughs> I was feeling so sad for Paul when I saw your tweet. Which one? Uh, about, uh, it was something like, you know, Microsoft, Nokia, and AT&T announced the greatest Windows phone ever and, and, and go on sale on <laughs> Easter Sunday. And then you something yep. it was something sad like I give up. <laughs> I, I yeah, give so up. I actually I was ha I had lunch with my wife. Was it that day? I think it was that day, and she said, "Why didn't you take a picture of the non-existent the line empty, in front of the AT and T yeah, store without yeah. lights out? You know that would have like Aww. really sealed it. You know, Aww. so sad. Yeah. But did you did you hear why supposedly they did that? Because they, thought thought was was they wanted to avoid lines. No. 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 <laughs> yeah, that's Actually, right. right. <laughs> that, that might have been a reason. But um, Fierce Wireless got somebody from Nokia to say why they did this. And they said that AT&T requires you to stock a new phone on Sundays. So it was like a policy thing, supposedly. It is an a right. Unless you're an iPhone, in which case it's a Friday. <laughs> right? Come oh, on. Is there, huh. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, that's, iPhone that's gets what all they kinds said. of passes. I, I can assure you, there's not <laughs> ever been an iPhone made that has passed AT and T's drop test, but they still sell them. That's so. a good point. But I'm telling yeah. you, I mean, <laughs> iPhones go on sale on Friday because you want to maximize the line. Yeah. It's always yeah. mean someone actually looked into the best time to do something yeah. like that. I mean, <laughs> I, I can pretty much. I don't know what the best day of the week is, but I pretty much can guarantee it's not Easter Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Probably>. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah. maybe well, you know, part of it is it's not Easter Sunday in Finland; it's Monday already. 
it's not Easter Sunday for a lot of people, but that's not really the point. <laughs> the point I, is the store's we, we not sort of open. Over whether it's a whether it should be a holiday or not, right. it, you know. But it is so for right. a lot of the country, unfortunately. Right. The store's not it's open. Not that's the main it's thing. It's not. Yeah, nothing. Any Sunday would be a bad idea. Yeah, I think so. Uh, all right, yeah. all right. Um, I did. I did that out of order, but I just couldn't. The tweet was so sad. It was. <laughs> It was like, <laughs> well, you know, you know, seriously, like, uh, Mark, listen, you know this, you've known this, for, you've been dealing with me for years, right? I've been dealing with you. I, for I want, I want to have good news to report to people, right? I, I want to be positive. I know. Um, unfortunately, too often in this business, in my line of work, anyway, um, you know, you just, you're just met by the stupidity that occurs from these companies, and it's just mind-bogglingly disappointing sometimes, you know. And I, yeah, between the three of them, AT and T, Microsoft, and Nokia. I, did, did, did this not come up in a conference call or nothing? No? Nobody? <laughs> yeah. Astonishing. <laughs> I know, I know. And you know, Friday, you know why Friday would have been even more awesome? Because they had this big promotion in New York in Times Square the Friday before Easter. On Good right. Friday, they did this. Right. They had Nicki Minaj. They right. had a whole, like, big light show in Times Square. And then <coughs> nothing. <laughs> For two days, nothing. The good news is we're hearing that they're, what are they're getting each AT and T sales rep gets what fifty bucks to sell one of these phones, something like that. They're going to push it, right? When the stores did no. open later that week, <laughs> did promote yeah. it, didn't they? Um, I mean, they, they well, didn't push the hell of it on Sunday. I can tell you that. I'm busy <laughs> eating my ham. Uh, so, so there's two uh, there's two different sides to this. Uh, you know what happened once once the stores were open. Right. So, right. What um, happened? News News dot com went around and posed some of the reporters posed as first time buyers oh, for I smartphones. Love, what is it? Secret shoppers. I love that. <laughs> I would love it. So if they, they go did into five location. stores in New York. Yeah. And right. they try to get them to sell them a Lumia, and they all told them they should go with an iPhone. Oh. Yeah. But that's because they were young um, and hip. <laughs> I think it was just like they haven't gotten I, I went, gone I went into the, the uh, Adam store and was blown away by how knowledgeable they were about oh, the Lumia 900 and that's positive good. about it. And yes. And by the way, and without me prompting them, I mean, that's good. I was I was yeah. impressed by that. I happened to be in an AT&T store, I think, Wednesday, the Wednesday before. Mm-hmm. And the sales rep had one. He was he. Yeah, they had gotten them earlier. He yeah. pulled out his Lumia, which is funny because we were told not to say a word about the one that we had, blah, blah, blah. And um and he was very, he was waxing ecstatic. He loved it. Yeah. He was happy about it. Um, yeah. So, I mean. And then, you know, so I, I tweeted about the news.com story and I said, wow, this is so disappointing because this is what's been happening all along. And I thought right. things were going to be different. Right. So then a whole mm-hmm. bunch of people came out on Twitter and said, that's not what happened to me. I had an awesome experience. When I went to my store, they were all over it. People Good. loved the phone. They Good. were trying to sell it. So, you know. Weird, weird it, that CNET would publish something that was uh, vaguely anti-Microsoft though, you know. <laughs> no, you know, they had an agenda, you, really? No, no. Listen oh. though, I, that story isn't actually anti-Microsoft. Like it, they, okay. they actually went in and said, "Look, we really want the Lumia. Like we love this. We want it." And sure. they tried to buy it. You know, so okay. I, I think I blame New York. I'm from New York. I live here, but I blame New York. Well, you guys are too cool for school. You're not going to ever be like, you know, oh, Windows Phone. This is awesome. It's it's just not cool enough. It's what the kids are using, Leo. <laughs> and you know, I feel bad because the kin. I wish they'd kept the kin around, and I wish they'd. You and I, you and I had this conversation, Paul. I thought the My kin son was, still uses the kin. Yeah, it's a great phone for young people. They should have sold it with no data plan. Yep. It would have been huge. Uh, kids would have used it with Messenger in high school. It would have been popular. Uh, yep. And it's just um, the failure of marketing. I understand why you get frustrated, because this Lumia Nine Hundred is a. It's a great phone, and yep. so it needs to be. It need, and I'm, I'm glad to hear that. It's so immediately, obviously excellent. Yeah, you just have to see it, and then yeah. you realize it's beautiful. The screen is beautiful. The way it feels in your hand is beautiful. It's beautiful. It, it's really nice. I mean, it's you have to really just either be a complete ass or trying really hard to say something. I mean, wholeheartedly bad about this. The thing. reviews it's have been just, positive, haven't they? Nice. Been? I would. Uh, well, I haven't read them. Uh, Our review was positive. I would. Uh, my understanding, based on headlines and so forth, is that they're mostly positive. Yeah. I mean, I, ours I've gotten were, a lot ours of comments. Ours is extremely from... positive. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that even the camera, which is probably not quite iPhone 4s quality, is still yeah. very good, very easy to use. 
Uh, you know, it's got a great screen. So you're right. Look and feel. It could not be better. Um, yeah, no, it's stunning. Yeah, yeah. And people comment on it, you know, which is a, a yeah. sure sign of something right. I think you know, that's I mean, true. As, as, you're right. Yeah. As good as, you know, like a, a Samsung Focus S, which is a fine phone, it's fine. It looks, I mean, you know, it's just it's, a black it's plastic. It doesn't look yeah. like anything. Yeah. It looks like an Android yeah. phone. You, you'd have no idea that there was anything special going on there at all. Um, this one really stands out. And they did have a, you know, they had a problem with data connections that on some undetermined number of phones. But Nokia, to their credit, came right out of the gate and said, okay, we're going to replace those phones. Yep. We've got a fix. It's a software fix. And we're going to give every single person between now and April 21st who buys a phone, even if you don't have the problem, we're going to give you a hundred buck credit. Wasn't that neat? Yeah. Um, I, like that it, cool? I like it better when the company blames the people who are complaining <laughs> and then You're waits a long time and, th and then has a press conference where they talk about other stuff and pretend that that's not a problem. And then everyone who is supposed to be in the press actually believes them. Right. And then the problem supposedly goes away, even though they actually never fixed it. Right. I think that's a way better approach. Mm-hmm. You're connecting Am I too sarcastic it wrong. for most people. The let lack me, of Wi-Fi. Let me say this a different way. <laughs> it's your imagination. <laughs> yeah. What was it? The wi It was Wi-Fi. It was the problem. It's a, no, they said um, it was a software issue with what power management that somehow, in some cases, would turning it off impact the uh, the data connection. But it was just a software fix. And it, the actually the mysterious bit of this story is that supposedly on the 16th, which I think is Monday. Uh, they're supposedly going to be rolling out some kind of a software update that will fix this problem. So I ask you this. How, how is it that we've spent the last 18 months complaining that AT&T never rolls out any software updates for anything on Windows Phone? Isn't that interesting? And yet this thing is going to be slipstream to users in yeah. some magical, imaginary fashion immediately. Don't does you think that any, Microsoft... Does anybody know? I, I know. I can tell you. I can <laughs> guess. They wrote a big... Microsoft wrote a big check, or Nokia wrote a big check. Yeah. Somebody wrote a check and said, no, you're mm -hmm. going to fix this. This is too important to our future as a company for so Nokia I actually, and to Windows if, Phone. If I were going to bet money, I, I, I wouldn't say someone wrote a check. I think it's more along the lines that because of deals that were previously in place between Nokia and AT&T probably, this is a big deal for both of these companies. And I think that this is the, even though AT&T has obviously launched multiple phones and so forth, I mean, I think this is the one where they thought this is going to take off. You know, we should put something behind this. And I, I think this is maybe the first time when, you know, it actually behooves AT&T to do the right thing. You know, it's amazing uh, what you can do when your own self-interest is at stake. Um, <laughs> you know, like at and I don't think this really cared before. Um, there were probably too few users to justify uh, rolling out those updates or to care about it. But this time I think they care. And so it's interesting. You know, here we, it's going to be less than a week later and they're going to fix it. Wow. Hilarious. Hilarious. That's Hilarious. never happened on a Windows phone before. Remember how long we suffered with the first generation Windows 7 phone? Yeah, the entire time. <laughs> was, <laughs> no, but I mean, there uh, were like, there was like some legitimate well. bugs and issues. And, yeah. 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 There's still are. Well, we're still waiting minute. for disappearing keyboard fixes oh. for any of those phones. So. That's like a little arcade game you get to play every time you want to text <laughs> message. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Oh, yeah. oh, well, something to Facebook. It's hilarious. It's a new... Uh, yeah. you're although, a lot of although supposedly we're going to get the key disappear disappearing keyboard fix on Verizon sometime soon maybe oh, well, so actually so <laughs> supposedly least... some AT&T phones are going to get it sometime as well yeah. you know it's, it's kind of like saying you know yeah. the Mayans will be proven right eventually <laughs> but <laughs> you know when, when we don't know <laughs> wow anyway yeah. um uh, uh you know congratulations i popped some champagne on easter sunday uh i had you know what i celebrated with a giant ham uh, I had chocolate, let, a lot of chocolate, Easter eggs. Hey, but Leo, I'm sorry, but how is this different from an average uh, Sunday? In the, like, like champagne and a champagne giant ham. Champagne and ham. <laughs> <laughs> Alfred, bring the ham. Um, uh, let's take a break. Then when we come back, we got a roadmap, a cross-product group roadmap. Hooey. We're talking about Office, IE, and something known as Antares. If you listen carefully, you've heard Mary Jo talk about that. Also, uh, Windows 8 tablets, Gartner Group's not bullish. XP support, end of line, and uh, more. But first, I want to talk a little bit about our friends at the Ford Motor Company. Big f big fan, as you know. I drive my uh, 2010 Mustang everywhere. It's now, you know, it's funny. I now actually, somebody the other day was, they leaned out the window and gave me the thumbs up. And I'm not sure if it was because of the Mustang, which I have to admit is is sharp, because of my great good looks, or perhaps they were Twit listeners. And if if, if it's the, if it's the last, thank you. I I salute you. 
Uh, but I do think it's kind of pretty distinctive when I'm driving down the road in that red Mustang with the license plate that say twit.tv on it. I just love it. And I have to say, you will notice when you see me, and I, I challenge you, you will notice I am looking at the road. I have my hands on the wheel. I am a good driver. I am a safe driver. Partly because I have a kid who's learning to drive right now, and he, so he's, I, I make sure I set, I set a good example. But also because with Ford Sync, I don't have to look down, twiddle knobs, fiddle with anything. No. I can talk to my car and tell it what to do. Everything from making a call to getting directions, even things you wouldn't even expect, like setting the cabin temperature, uh, get, uh, you know, asking for the nearest gas station, gas station prices, horoscopes, and a whole lot more. And now with AppLink, it's just it's just exploding. Well, that's a bad word to use when you're talking about cars. It's just it's just taking off. Maybe also a bad word because the the app developers now. For iPhone, Android phone, and yes, Windows Mobile, Windows Phone 7, can uh, work with Ford to put sync in the phone. How does that work? Well, when you get in the car, and this, you know, I always connect via Bluetooth, but you also have a USB connector in every Ford Sync vehicle. You connect the USB or the Bluetooth. Now you can talk to your phone and the apps that are app link enabled. So, Pandora, for example, you can say, you know, play my Lady Gaga station. You can say thumbs up, thumbs down. You can say, uh, Say, bookmark this song for when I get home so I can buy it. They've got Stitcher and Slacker Radio. That's great for news and talk radio and podcasts, of course. Open Beak for Twitter. And some new apps that we haven't mentioned before, like NPR. The, the NPR app is now sync-enabled. You can tell. So, you, again, you don't have to pick up the phone. You don't have to touch the phone. This is the idea. You're driving. Your eyes are on the road. Your hands are on the wheel. And you say, you know, play NPR. Uh, play uh, I want to hear all things considered. It'll do it. They have an iHeartRadio app. You've probably used that before. In fact, that's how you listen to my radio show on KFI and the other stations that I'm on. We're part of that. So the Thumb Play service works. You can use simple voice commands to find saved stations. Skip to the next song on the radio part of it. Uh, give a song a thumbs up. They've got sync destinations. Some of the sync vehicles don't have the big screen like mine do. They have a smaller screen. with And, and they do have turn-by-turn -turn directions, but it's all audio. You can use sync destinations on your smartphone to get access to navigation and directions. So just some really nice features. Ford has a complete API for developers and a mobile application developer network that helps developers work with Ford directly about their app ideas. So all of this is just, I think, very, you know, kind of cool, and I wanted to celebrate it. You can find out more about Sync, AppLink, and other technologies at their website, ford.com slash technology. That's the page they made for us, us geeks. Or, but you know, the best thing to do is go to uh, go to a, a Ford dealer near you and drive one. Say, I want to try the, uh, I want to try a, I don't know, a Fiesta or a Focus or a, that new Taurus SHO. I want to try one with AppLink, and they'll, you know, get you in. They'll set up your phone. They'll do the whole thing so that you can try it. Ford.com/technology. We thank them for their support. Speaking of driving, let's get a roadmap across product. Group roadmap, and this is a leak, right? Yes, this, this is a leak. This isn't something they told you. No. Um, so I'll give you the backstory. What happened? There, there's a guy named Martin Visser, who's the CE, CEO of a new SharePoint um, company called Metro, and he tweeted a week ago, "Hey, I just downloaded some roadmaps <laughs> from uh, Microsoft's Oops. partner network." Oops. Um, so I started asking him some questions. I'm like, yeah, well, I, I think that's probably confidential, right? And he's like, nope, they didn't password protect it. It's open. <laughs> anybody can do it. <laughs> and so I checked, and yes, indeed, it was open, Whoops. and anybody could do it. Um, so, you know, you, you always have to take these roadmaps with a grain of salt, right? Like, these are pretty vague roadmaps, but there's are some they, interesting Are they like PowerPoint hidden. presentations for the sales force, or, <laughs> you know, what is it that you're seeing? I mean, who's it for? No, so, so, yeah, it's, this is for Microsoft's partners, so they partners. can kind of think ahead, you know, okay, what has what Microsoft got coming out in got the it. next year plus? So if you look at these roadmaps, you know, it listed by, by product, and then it tells you, okay, here's where we're at, and here's what the next step is. Um, so, you know, there's obviously nothing about Windows 8 on here. Like, that whole part of the roadmap is pretty much blank, right. not surprisingly, because, yeah. you know, they're going to control that. But the, the most interesting part to me was Office 15. There's some interesting um, dates um, as far as what is and isn't there. So there's no RTM date listed. Paul, Paul and I have both heard they're trying to RTM this product this year, um, probably like towards November. 
Um, but then the general availability date for all the Office 15 stuff, like the clients, the servers, and all that, is shown as early 2013. So oh. I'm thinking, okay, it's going to be probably called Office 2013, given that, right? right and right. Um, what else is interesting? The IE 10 thing on here is very kind of confusing and interesting. It shows, it has all these little weird symbols, like you have to kind of look at the colors and the shapes and try to figure out what they mean. But um, IE 10 looks like something is coming middle of this year that they're saying is general availability. Um, so that's weird because you'd think IE 10 would be pretty tightly linked to Windows 8. Which um, is which is probably October, the, right? So this is earlier. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, well, so on, that's on that's the flip a side, Remember that IE nine shipped some months before Windows seven. It did. It so did. maybe they're so trying maybe to that's match what's it up. Happen. Yeah, yeah, it could be that. Um, and then um, there's some parts of the roadmap that um, Martin Visser didn't print that I looked at. There's um, Silverlight's on there, but it shows Silverlight five being released in December 2011, and then the rest of the roadmap is blank. Hmm. You know, saying basically, okay, that's it for Silverlight. That five is probably the end of the road there. Um, what else is I, interesting? I heard IIS. from someone that it, Silverlight is gone. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's the end, right? Wow. Silverlight 5 is the end. Mm -hmm. um, IIS, which is Internet Information Services, they use the codename Antares, which we talked about on Windows Weekly before. So I think IIS 8 might be Antares. That's the uh, Microsoft hosting framework um, that's supposed to be out pretty soon, too, if you go by this roadmap. So there's some, some little good tidbits in there. Um, Nothing earth shattering, nothing that you said, whoa, I can't believe that. The, on the only one I was kind of surprised about was IE 10 being yep. from the map. Um, the but thing yeah, I don't get still, about IE fun. 10, though, is, you know, in writing the book, you know, uh, for Windows 8, there's a lot of Metro stuff going on in IE 10. And obviously, there's some background stuff or, you know, back end stuff, I guess you'd call it, you know, the rendering engine and standards compliance and all that kind of stuff. But when you look at IE10, the desktop application, I mean, there's basically not a single change there compared to IE9, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. that suggests to me that if, if, if unless something changes, that, that that schedule is very possible, you know? Because the mm -hmm. thing that would be released mid-year would be IE10 for Windows 7 and right. Vista, I guess. And uh, that's and not a particularly... And they never updated compelling. that, right? No, that, that could basically right? haven't updated in months, right? Yeah, I think since um, last I, summer, I actually I think? even, yeah, the, the developer preview was of Windows 8 was kind of the next platform preview for uh, IE. And I believe they didn't, I don't think they've ever released a desktop version since then, you know, yeah. a standalone uh, platform preview. Yeah, so kind of weird. Um, but could be, you know, it could just be what you just said, the desktop version, and that's it. Yeah, it's not I mean, clearly, the, yeah, yeah, I mean, it, and it's fine. I mean, you know, they have lots of investments to make on the back end and also in the Metro stuff. That makes sense. But, I mean, uh, it's sort of a lackluster release for people on Windows 7, I would think, you know, or Windows Vista. I mean, there's not really much going on there. Yeah. That we know. Of. Huh. Right, that we know. <laughs> yeah. hmm. Can I still, I see on your... Uh, blog post a link here can i still go there and and read it myself the, um, uh, the, the roadmap that uh i didn't post a link to the roadmap oh um uh, i just posted the guy's tweet link to his tweets and um i heard somebody say today that the they've already shut the link off uh, um, i was gonna say you might want to so. check that every day i bet it gets turned <laughs> off <there. laughs> well, not so this public. was a week ago this came out so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but he did um, he and then microsoft the gave me a statement which is cool. I did. I posted the images. He, yeah. I asked him, and I said, "You, po you posted the images." He goes, "Go ahead, post he put them." them on I posted Flickr. them. Yeah, <laughs> he did. Yeah. Former Even Microsoft better. partner. Yeah, Martin I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't actually mention uh, his business anymore on his Twitter page. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, like he said, it was wide open. Um, so you know what? The, somewhere today there was a conversation in the Windows division that said, somewhere someone said, "See." That's why we don't reveal any information. Because you exactly. sons of... Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, Can't you can't even trust the rest of the company with it. <laughs> Yo, people. Yeah, exactly. It's not the press. You people with your need to know. <laughs> it's our partners. <laughs> wow. Shut up and whatnot. Wow. But you know what? I'm, I'm going to defend what he did in a way because I know there are a lot of people who just want some really yeah. basic answers yeah. like, is Office going to be in 2013? Or is it going to be in 2012? That's like a, people ask neat, me those need basic to know questions. Basis, Mary jo, need to know. <laughs> that's what they say, right? They, they're like, everyone who needs to know that knows. Well, oh. I can tell you from all the questions I get from 
pretty big customers. Not everybody who sure. thinks they need to know knows it. So. Right. Right. There you go. <laughs> So, no, 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 the weirdest, I think most of them were used to promote other shows on the network, I guess, because the weirdest thing was Colonel Clink. He was actually one of the guys. And he was as Colonel Clink. I'm oh, here goodness. looking for, I don't know, I mean, he's a Nazi. This yeah, is not yeah, funny. Yeah. And he's... <laughs> well, it's funny for that reason, though, Leo. No, yeah. it wasn't funny. It was weird. It was like, oh, you're climbing up a building in New York City. And, and I think Batman says, you know, Robin always has something like, you know... <laughs> Holy Auschwitz, Batman, that's Colonel Clink. And then Probably Bat not what he said. No, he don't think he said that. <laughs> and then Batman goes, yes, Robin. And then he says, and he, t and he says, hello, citizen. What brings you to Gotham? And, and Clink says something like, I'm looking for Colonel Hawk, and I think he has escaped again. It was just strange. That's awesome. Anyway, that's on YouTube. That awesome. It's a that's montage awesome. of all of the celebrity uh, pop-ins. And that one, not you know, Sammy Davis is fun, and there's weird ones too. Like it's all fake because you know they, you're, they're they're standing, pretending to climb. The other thing that's very strange, and I think in 1966 people weren't sensitized to it, Batman's awfully close to Robin as they're climbing. I I, I don't think that's necessary. Uh, I'll find the video Adam, Adam and show West you. Just got his uh, star in the. I saw that. Uh, he's right. great. You know why? Because the Simpsons yeah. have have revived. Well, I know him. why. Of course, I know why. He's fantastic. It's not the Simpsons. Family Guy has revived yeah. him. He's the mayor uh, of uh, in Family Guy, and he's just Mayor, mayor West. He's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, item number, uh, I guess this is three. I wanted to cheer you up. <laughs> Before this one, She's Gar really, you just have to bring in completely unrelated <laughs> information. This, is, this has nothing to do with Microsoft, and that's why you might find this cheering. Uh, Gartner says now Gartner's wrong a lot. Ball, don't take this seriously. Windows eight tablets to grab just eight percent of market in twenty thirteen. Yeah, that's a little. You know, I, I, I've always sort of said that uh, Windows and Android and, and iOS, I guess, would split the tablet market in some capacity. Never. I, I just didn't think it would look like that. So, <laughs> small, <laughs> it's know, a slice. A it is a slice split. Of I get it. Yeah. I get. We get. You know, that's <clears throat> the part we get. But yeah, you know, there was some small market share. Uh, maybe as much as four or six percent they were talking about by the end of this year, but just eight percent in in twenty thirteen. That's um, that's surprising. I'm going to recontextualize it for you, Paul. That's fantastic. Please, <laughs> Please explain From how that's zero fantastic. to eight percent. Oh, because it's a yes, right? It's a two thousand percent increase. And and yeah. <laughs> frankly, it's hard to beat the iPad. I mean, this thing is pretty spectacular. They're going to have to demonstrate something. Look at how the Android tablets are just you know crashed and burned. Well, I think yeah, the problem for Microsoft is going to be that these Windows eight tablets are not the same thing as an iPad. They're computers, right? You know? And, but um, they have tried this before. Ten years. Th no, they well, tried no, this. I mean, this is a different approach, but still uh, fundamentally, still a computer. And 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 there are pros and cons to this approach. Absolutely, there's going to be a certain segment of the population, apparently eight percent, that is uh, very excited about that kind of eight, thing. Eight percent. <laughs> <laughs> but then apparently there's going to be a, a another part of the population, uh, ninety-two percent, that um, is that's not what they're looking for. So it, it's it's interesting. I mean, I. Uh, you know, when Apple introduced the iPad, there was a lot of talk about this being a new product category. And I sort of poo-pooed that at the time. But I have to say, um, the iPad very clearly represents a new, a new product category. And it is, it, is, it is going to, and is today probably, you know, stealing people away from PCs. Because I think for a lot of people, PCs are just too complex for the types of things that they want to get done with regards to, you know, online services or what we think of as uh, general purpose computing or whatever. So, you know, we'll see. Obviously, I mean, this is just a projection, but um, you have to think they were shooting for a little bit higher than 8%, you know, with all the uh, <laughs> the work and uh, foundational stuff that goes into when something like Windows 8 is obviously a huge project. Oh, yeah. For Microsoft. yeah. And I, I, think, was... I think it also said um, tw only 12% by 2016. I mean, you can't really predict 2016, right? But I mean, it, it's not like they're predicting there's going to be some boom like, hey, it takes off. They're, they're just saying, yeah, you know, it's an iPad world and 
I yeah, we'll see. I mean, I, I think it's going to be, I, I personally don't believe it's going to be that small. Um, and, uh, and we'll see. I'll be able to see. The same know. research firm just put out a report that said that uh, they expected iPad sales to double in 2012 over 2011. And uh, that the iPad, I was just curious, well, if, okay, so it's 8% for Windows 8 tablets. What is it for yep. the rest of the world? Android uh, last year is about 40%. Uh, so well, it's taking so that the, share from Android because uh, right. they say Apple the, well, will continue to have 60% market share. Apple's, uh, so I don't know where the, obviously it's not the share that's doubling, it's the sales, right? So right, 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 right. the market grows and we'll no, see. I mean, got a huge whatever share. it's worth, iPad's share of the the tablet market, such as it is, as it is has actually gone down year over year. Um, yes, but surprisingly Android I, has 40%. I was shocked. Frankly. Yeah, I don't ever see anyone mostly using mostly fire, tablet. mostly Kindle fire. Yeah, so it's like, fires, right? Fire. It's all yeah, fires. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Um, yeah, so and that's, I mean, and that's I, the other I, thing about this these Gartner numbers too, though they're measuring media tablets. That's ah. what the keys are, right? So this must just be Huawei type tablets. Uh, you know, I, there's an, you know a lot of people uh, people who uh, like the iPad and, and are kind of you know Apple people and Apple themselves will argue that. You know the Kindle Fire doesn't compete with the iPad, so we don't really we don't have to consider that. You know, but I, I would say that the delta between the uh, the Kindle Fire and the iPad versus the iPad and a Woa tablet or the iPad and a Windows A tablet it's is much less. an interesting comparison. I yeah. mean, uh, no, no, I would agree with you. I think the Fire does continue with does compete with the iPad. I do too. I in do a too. way that Woa does not. Woa yeah. is a, is desktop productivity tool. It is not a but, but, media you know, tablet. But that, but that statement itself is very interesting because it suggests that maybe Microsoft's um, mispositioning the iPad isn't exactly dead on. Right? right, that by making it such a capable device, by maybe letting in a little bit too much of not just the power of the PC but also the complexity of the PC, they have an, in in essence not created an iPad type product, but have created yet another PC. Which, you know, maybe Although, shouldn't you, shock. I was going to say, do you really think uh, WOA tablets are productivity devices? So, like, they are going to have the four office apps on them. But otherwise, they can't run any existing apps, right? So they kind of are more like a media tablet, maybe, than, than the yeah, Intel no, no. ones. Uh, sure. But, but yeah. you know, and, and this is, <laughs> you know, again, I, I, I'm not trying to promote my book. I'm just obsessed with it right now because it's all I'm doing. But. Yeah, but one thing that strikes me again and again and again as I go through this book and as I write each chapter and each section is this kind of weird dual nature of Windows 8 where the metro environment is just not complete. It's not everything. And you can you you can pick any bit of the OS you want to to make this case. But look at something like the Photos app. You, know? um, you can look at photos in the Photos app. You can look at photos that are online in the Photos app or on your computer. You can't edit photos. You can't share them today, although anyone could add that capability. I mean, you can print them, but you can't do advanced things with them. You know, that stuff all still has to occur in the desktop. And every single part of the system is compromised in that same way. Um, you know, you could make the case that on the iPad, if a functionality it doesn't exist, it just doesn't exist. There's no fallback. You know, at least in Windows 8, you can fall back to a desktop app. Um, but that argument gets less and less viable over time because the iPad capabilities go up or as time go by as times go by as time goes by so uh, you know I don't think anyone is complaining today about the capabilities of the built-in iPad photo stuff you can acquire photos off of a card or a camera using an iPad you cannot do that in the metro environment in Windows 8 you can still do it with the desktop apps um, but that's a lot of stuff for people to figure out I mean you know where the line is, where the functionality stops, and I, I just I don't know. To me, that's just I'm, you know, again, it has the pros and cons. But to me, ultimately, if you have to call it anything, I think it's complex. Yeah, yeah, you know. So eight percent is not so bad. Meanwhile, here's Colonel Clink on Batman, <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> just to cheer you up a little bit, just a little bit. <clears throat> See, now, wait a minute. Short back climbs are harder than the longer ones. I, I just want to say. Uh, hold on, hold on. I, I, they can't possibly be. He, is he really behind them or are they on a different road? This is how they do it. And I've looked at all of them and he is right behind them. It looks like a like a Greco-Roman wrestling It's move. exactly. It doesn't. There's something. And I, th I can only think it's because it was 1966 or something. But there's definitely. Well, you know what? You know what it is, too, though? They both have to fit in the frame. 
and then you want that window open. Okay, where the guy you're can, right. You're right. It's all maybe, about maybe. the shot. Yeah. It takes a while to unlimber your muscles, Robin, but it's all good training. <laughs> Colonel, what are you doing here in Gotham City? I am looking for an underground agent. One of ours or one of yours? And why the exposition hall at the Coliseum? Who knows? You never know where you might find one. Be careful not to get picked up. Chief O'Hara can be very tough with aliens incognito. Especially incognito? That's with ins my monocle? <laughs> well, say hello to Colonel Hogan for us. It's a wonder he hasn't tried to borrow your bat rope to pull another one of his escapes. <laughs> Okay, that is just, I don't know, it's just, I don't know. That's cr That's awful. <laughs> it does not age well. <laughs> I need you to understand how much I loved this show as a child. Oh, no, you and, and me I, both. Upon discovering that there was, in fact, a Batman movie with these guys was like the greatest moment oh. of my life with oh. the bat shark repellent. Oh. I remember the day in school that we ever, I think it was in fourth grade. It was 66, I was 10 years old. Yeah, I was in fourth grade. Yep. And uh, so you were really young because you're a lot younger than me. And uh, I probably well, it was in syndication or whatever. Oh, maybe that was it. Because we because it was all anybody could talk about because nobody'd seen anything like this. This is 1966. Yep. This was just a bizarre, uh, oh, yeah. amazingly creative TV show, and that's all anybody could talk about in 1966. <laughs> it was it. That was it. And it's a little strange. No, I, it. I know it's it. only 21 years after World War II when that scene takes place. <laughs> I, I don't looking for the logic of this. Uh, <laughs> just, I never understood. I, I, Hogan's most, Heroes was a funny show. Most comic books make more sense. Yeah, it was based on Stalag Seventeen with William Holden. Great movie, uh, which I recommend. Loosely based, loosely, because that's a serious movie. Um, I just I never understood how that got on the air. But then, <laughs> who knows? Uh, XP support. This is typical. It's ten years, right, to uh, end of life. Well. <laughs> That's typical. You know, it's funny you say that because when Windows XP came out, the average life cycle of a Windows release was like two and a half years. Yeah, at it's best. gotten I longer. Mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've gotten this, a few extensions. <laughs> XP support. Now, does it now is, is so XP is still support like uh, I can uh, they're doing updates on XP. <laughs> really? I love that you're confused by this. I am very confused. It is. Conf yes. It, uh, yeah. Yes, you can. <laughs> OK. And I they're going to end it. Uh, in two years, so the clock is ticking, kids. Literally, you, may, you might want to take a look at Windows Vista. It's it's not too late. It is too late though. <laughs> buy, buy a buy a few it extra years. Too, Windows Vista will probably expire before Windows XP. But well, that just shows you what a classic Windows yeah. XP was. That's still being nobody used. Nobody wants by to touch people. this one. Yeah. yeah. So I mean. Yeah, so Vista, first we got to talk about term, right? Mainstream and extended support, because Microsoft makes that complicated too, right? So right. mainstream supports when you get everything for free. That's for us, and normal Microsoft, people, us. Right. Yeah. Normal people, everyday people. Users, and, everyone, yeah. Right. When you go on to extended support, so there's five years of free support. Then five, The next five years are called extended, extended support. Extended support is and like so, life support in the hospital. It is, <laughs> exactly. It's when hospice comes in and they and yeah. they nurse it along right. for a few extra years. You're not going right. home so you anymore. you only get... You only get the security fixes for free when you're in extended support, and you have to pay if you want other kinds of updates and patches. But and they're all. still so, doing it, which is kind of interesting. They're still doing it. Yeah. Yep. Oh. I don't. I mean, but this, they, yeah. Clearly, they have wanted to end this thing a long time ago, but they just can't. They're just end this of thing. And <laughs> please. Well, yeah. what a weird, what a, what a weird problem to have, right? I mean, uh, through it, it's not because XP was of such high quality, right? I think it's important to remember that. XP got an extra lease on life because of Vista, frankly. You know, the perceived issues with Vista, even here we are years later, where, you know, companies just refused to upgrade to this version of the operating system. And so they really kind of, well, not to mention, and it was delayed too many years. So, uh, you know, they've kind of had to push XP support forward, forward, forward. And, um, you know, here we are now supporting this 10-year-old version of Windows. It's, it's hard to imagine how long ago that was. But I guess to go, if you were to go back to when Windows XP came out, remember that 10 years previous to that was like Windows 3.0, right? 1991. That's so dead though, right? I mean, we don't, I can't get updates for that now. No, that one's dead, but I mean. <laughs> but, no, I know. But it was, that just shows you how long this thing is No, going. but it was long dead by the time right. XP came. Right. I mean, right. and yet here we are, you know, but that's the change. I, I You know, Microsoft started out as a, uh, a small systems provider, really, right? Uh, 
individuals and very small businesses. They work group computing and, you know, they move their way up into the enterprise. But the problem is once you get into the enterprise, and they're huge in the enterprise now, is you have to abide by their standards. Right. And their standards are you support this thing for many, many years. Which is how it and, should uh, be from a business point of view, right? I mean, XP, yeah. I, mean, I mean, let's be, okay, now let's talk honestly. There's nothing wrong with XP. It's it's rock solid. A lot of people uh, don't feel the pressure. If Microsoft I, uh, didn't stop supporting it, I don't know who would upgrade. I, I can't tell you who said this uh, because I promised them I wouldn't say this. But I, I talked to some people for an XP, you know, article this week, and one of them promised, you know, made me promise I wouldn't identify them. But they said, look, there, there's nothing about XP that doesn't work any less well exactly. today than worked three years ago. It's not like some monumental shift has occurred where exactly. you know suddenly. A lot of this stuff is kind of artificial. You know, Microsoft has done this thing where, you know, I think the latest version of IE and other products, you know, just won't run on XP. It's not that they couldn't be made to run on XP, but they're obviously they're doing it's what they can. It's completely artificial. Stuff. And there's something to be said about XP, which is it's been patched so many times that it it's is kind of a known quantity. It's, yeah. it's probably more solid. Yeah. Um, well, it is what it is. I mean, you know, it's it's. It, after the, after so many years, I mean, it's it's no longer optimized for the you know for the type of hardware that we tend to run today. You know, it's it's it is of a different era. It's still, you know, I'm sure a Commodore 64 would run really fast today on modern uh, PC <laughs> too. But you know, it's just it's old. So yeah, I mean, it's I think time moves on, and Windows 7 is of course a much better OS than XP. But I, and I actually Windows 7 could very well be the next XP. I think it will be. I think uh, look at what's happening here. Uh, yeah. There are going to be a lot of businesses and maybe even quite a few users who say, I'm not going to Windows 8. And Windows yeah. 7, we'll, see, we'll, we, see we'll be talking long, in 20 right? years from now. Windows You'll be saying, Windows 7, 7, end of life is only eight years <laughs> off. I feel, I feel a little better about Windows 7 than I did about XP, though. I mean, you know, oh, and, oh, much we've better. talked about this a lot. Oh, because, it's great. 7 is no, But even when XP came out, XP came into the world in the most horrible state. I mean, yeah. it was a yeah. horrible mess. You get, people forget. We kind of wax nostalgic about it. It wasn't until like Service Pack 2 that it was usable. Are you kidding? Well, and by, by the way, why did Service Pack 2 have to happen? Why did Microsoft right. have to stop development of all right. their products? Why did they have to do trustworthy computing? Right. Well, because of XP. I mean, right. XP was such a steaming pile of crap, frankly, right. when it came out that, right. uh, you know, it, that that was their wake-up call. So we're, we're acting like it's this, it was this beautiful thing from day one, but... Um, that's not the case. Well, it's, I, it's it's funny because SP two XP SP two really should have been named a different operating absolutely. system. Absolutely, right? XP two point exactly. or something. Yeah, yeah. and wouldn't they wouldn't right. that have changed our perception of this dramatically? Right. I agree. Right, because yeah. that that thing Windows two thousand three or whatever they called it um, would have yeah that that's what we'd be talking about today. Exactly. Right. Because exactly. the XP that's being supported in two years uh, from now is not even XP Service Pack yeah. two. It's XP Service Pack three. And that came out mm -hmm. three, four years ago. I don't, I don't even remember. So it's it's a much more recent thing, and it, it it is the type of thing where I think they felt obligated to do the right thing for customers. They just called it XP, and they yeah. kept moving it forward. Yeah. But yeah. It really would have been some other thing. They would have, you know, they oh, yeah. might have called it something. It was an it was a whole new operating system, really, in many ways. Yeah. So okay, so when you say XP support ends in two years, you're talking extended support, right? It's, All of it. Mainstream yeah. support's already dead. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Vista mainstream support. <laughs> Is also dead. <laughs> I believe it ended just this week, right? <laughs> yeah. It's, this week. Yeah. Yep. As of this week. Yeah. So that's it on that. <laughs> and you know, I don't see a lot of people saying I'm not moving from Vista. I don't. I don't see a main. A, you know, a groundswell. I I'm gonna turn. I'm gonna turn into that guy. I think I'm just gonna run Vista. <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna be my thing. You're gonna, You're gonna be do the, that petition on the web. You, you I want my Windows to be translucent, but I want my taskbar to be opaque. There is, the, you know, there's the Zune <laughs> guy, the guy who got the Zune tattoo, which I think he's had removed now, by the way. Yeah. Uh, you could yeah. be the Vista guy. Yeah, I'll be the Vista guy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that Paul Thorat. Remember him? He's the Vista guy. I was on vacation when they announced the name Vista. I was up in Vermont, and I got a call from Microsoft, and they said, uh, or from Wagad, I guess, and Wagner is some PR company, and they said, hey, uh, you know, they really want to talk to you, blah, blah, blah. And I'm on, I'm on vacation. It's just important, you know, and yeah, yeah, it's really important. I said, okay. So I remember I was up on the balcony of this kind of Swiss chalet looking thing in Vermont, looking down at my family at the mm, pool. I, I got the call. I won't say who it was, but a good friend of mine from Microsoft, and he says, yeah, we're going to. We decided on the branding for uh, this Volongoin thing, and it was like, okay, what's the name? And he's like, Windows Vista. And I'm like, I'm going to hang up on you now. <laughs> <laughs> like, are you kidding me? 
Like that's that's the name. Seriously, Vista. is this some kind of a joke? And remember, they had all that like terminology around it. It was clear and connected. Oh and, God, yeah. You remember that stuff? Oh yeah. And I'm like, I'm sitting there with yeah. the th you know my stupid cell phone, listening to this, and I'm like, oh God, guys, seriously. Like, <laughs> but they said they said the name is aspirational. Oh, crazy, yeah. and it was. They were really hoping. They were praying. <laughs> Do you think now with mainstream support ending? I don't think mm. that's common knowledge among uh, – look, it, there is a large contingent. I don't know what it is, 10, 20, 50 million people who use Vista because that's what came with their computer when they bought it eight years ago or whatever it was. Yeah. Well, and I don't they don't really pay impact. attention. They don't know. But, but it doesn't it – won't, it won't impact them. Security right? updates will still come out. Yeah. They're yeah. still going to get security updates. That's I mean, by the way, Microsoft hasn't released an update for Windows Vista in like – I don't know when was it released. Oh, that's Five interesting. Ago. You know, I mean, the rest. Yeah. You know, they had service pack whatever is out and has that's never. It. Right. It they never even released service pack two for seven. They, listen, right. no, Microsoft right. walks away from this stuff now as quickly yeah. as they can. Yeah. They don't even. You know, so I didn't do that. That's not what me. Happened? That was my dog. No, I'm just saying that's what they. <laughs> they just they keep walking. Did someone actually question who was the author of this? Don't look back. <laughs> just keep walking. <laughs> Eyes ahead. There's a churro store right up ahead. Um, like no, nah, that that was that was a low blow. I, I admit it. That was a low. <coughs> blow. We're going to talk about on live desktop. That's an interesting battle, and I think we might have a resolution. And I have yeah. to ask you guys uh, two things. One is that uh, these AOL patents, which Microsoft just got, and I got to ask you about the Instagram because every show and every show we're commenting on it because it's just such a fascinating story. So Mary Jo Foley is here from AllAboutMicrosoft.com. Paul Thorat. From the super site for Windows, winsupersite.com. And we have more with Windows Weekly coming up, including our tips, our picks. But before we do that, let's talk about go to my PC. Uh, this is remote access. Whoops, that's not it. There it is. This is remote access done right. I think you've, I think, uh, you know, there. I, I, know, I know Windows comes built in with remote access. I understand that. But I think there's a lot of people who choose go to my PC for a number of reasons over the program you got uh for one thing it's from citrix who designed rdp so i mean these it's not like these guys are kind of like oh we're going to see what we can do these, these are the guys that wrote it and it's very easy to use there's no you don't have to open ports on your it's so secure you no port opening or anything because they use nat traversal which means uh there's you there's your computer that you want to access and then you log in not to your computer directly that would require opening ports but to the go to my PC server, which then logs you in. And by doing so, this kind of triangular login, they've got the NAT traversal. It's more secure. You've got SSL through the whole transaction. So you could use it as a VPN. You could be at a, you know, an open a Wi Fi access spot at your local coffee shop, fire up go to my PC, and then you're secure going right to your office computer. Mac or PC, that's the other reason people use it. It's uh, completely cross platform. But here's something that is super cool. You can use Go to My PC with your iPad and your iPhone. Uh, they have free apps for the iPad and the iPhone, which means that you can access your office computer, do anything you would do at work on your iPad or your iPhone or even your Android tablet for those of you who have one. Uh, that's pretty spectacular. That's pretty amazing. Here's, uh, here's a way to find out what it'll do for you. Just log on to go to my PC.com. Actually, just go there. Click the orange try it free button and use our offer code Windows. Even if you're setting, I know it's confusing if you're doing, if you wanted to set this up on a Mac, but you can, it's the same because it's Windows Weekly. Get it? It's a Windows. Uh, you got a 30 day free trial. The uh, apps are free, so you can download it on your iPhone or your iPad or your Android tablet. And then the amazing thing is uh, you'll be accessing your office computer remotely, you know, minutes later from anywhere you go. Send and receive email, run any program, access any network resource, do anything you would do at your office computer, even on a smartphone. Now that is wild. I want you to try it right now. Visit go to mypc.com, click the try it free button, use the offer code Windows, 30 days free, no obligation, no cost to you. Uh, and the apps are absolutely free too. Go to mypc.com, offer code Windows. Paul Thorat, Mary Jo Foley. So on live, we saw the demo. On live, it's kind of an interesting story. It was originally uh, designed to be a gaming platform. So they would do all the rendering server side, which meant you could have an inexpensive device, a set-top box or even an old computer at home, and play games online. 
because all of the hard work, all of the graphics stuff is done remotely. And that seemed like their business for the first couple of years. Then all of a sudden at CES in January, it's like they blow us away. They've got an app, an iPad app that lets you run Windows remotely. Same idea. So all the work is being done server side. Uh, and they gave you a license not only to Windows, but to a Microsoft Office. They gave you storage. They have a paid version, a free version. And I asked Brian Jacquet, who was showing us at CES, this exact question. How the hell are you getting away with that? And he, I said, are those licensed? He said, yeah, they're licensed. We have a certain number of seat licenses. And, uh, you know, if too many people log in, then we can't let you in. But we have, we have lots of them. Microsoft's response was... That's a little more complicated than that. <laughs> okay. Did I simplify this too much? But Microsoft's no, response no, was, mean, that's I'm not how sure it works. Not, it's not surprising to me that someone couldn't figure out my Microsoft licensing. Yeah, because it's not, it's not... You can't just buy a number of seats and then assign it randomly. It's per machine, right? Well, actually, you per can device. do that, but only on Windows Server. Ah, yeah. that was the problem then. Yeah, I think... I, I'm sure from Microsoft's perspective, they looked at the cost of licensing Windows Server... Uh, Cal's versus you know Windows Seven, and and they can make more money on the server right. side. So so that's, basically, they said they're they're Microsoft said no, this isn't legal, right? Yeah. But have they solved this now? <laughs> I wonder if they, they've solved it. <laughs> they're trying, <laughs> they, obviously. Uh, yeah. I know. When I when I said to Microsoft, so it, so it's all set now, right? They're in compliance. They're like, yeah, we'll see. Oh, so, yeah, <laughs> not, yeah. oh boy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I think. So, that, I, Got it. I'm sorry. No, I was going to say, you, you know, the other group that really pushed Microsoft to take action here was, was the reseller channel because a bunch of, of those guys who are providing desktop as a service legally, you know, through Microsoft's licensing mechanism, they were like, wait, why can these guys get away with this and we can't? Like, it's unfair. It's, it's not a level playing field. So they really pushed Microsoft to come down on OnLive as well. So uh, what so. I understand, now correct me if I'm wrong, what I understand on live did is instead of when you launch it, you're not getting Windows anymore, you're getting Windows Server 2008. Yep. So it's now in compliance. It's the same. same it looks, I mean, you wouldn't know the difference, but nope. right. But now they're in compliance because they bought licenses to server. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> and I, I think the reason Microsoft isn't ready to say, yes, they're in compliance is that Microsoft hasn't yet. They have to audit it audited this yeah. to make sure yeah. that they have the correct number of licenses for the correct you know for the number of people who are concurrently accessing the service right yeah um yeah so but on lives on lives uh, answer to me when i asked them so do you think you're now in compliance their answer was very weird too they were like <laughs> you know nobody would have even noticed this except for a few of our more technical users right. they, they noticed uh, they changed the back <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's like, oh, like, guys, say, it's like wow. Apple saying, you know, no one would have noticed our collusion with the publishing yeah. companies that you know people when, just wouldn't buy ebooks. But Google said, no one would have noticed we were hacking Safari on the iPhone. You know, you'd have to be a real expert. <laughs> That's classic. That's cl I would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for those damn, damn you. It was kind of like that. Yeah, it was kind of like that. <laughs> like a Scooby Doo episode. Oh, yeah. Lord. Yeah. So, That's but the, in, the there's kind of a backstory because the guy who started on live is, is Steve Perlman. Right, who the, uh, was a division president at Microsoft? Radio, right? Yeah, he left. He started the he w started uh, Web TV, Web TV, sold oh. Web TV to Microsoft, Microsoft for a lot of money. Retired, then said, "Nah, I'm bored." He started Moxie. I don't know if anybody remembers that, but he's on live. He's a serial entrepreneur, brilliant guy, and has close ties to my, or at least used to have close ties to Microsoft. So I don't know. Um, you know, when we asked, probably bought a bunch of Windows Seven cals at the Microsoft store and thought that was going to do it. <laughs> hey, we, you know, we he bought it. His, like Microsoft we bought uh, it. employee badge to get in there. Uh, I asked them, and, they, and when I asked them, because I, I, you know, I, I don't know anything about Microsoft Windows licensing. I just, but it looked odd yeah. to me that you could use this. And I said, "Well, this is licensed." He said, "Yeah." And uh, according to, uh, by the way, I believe that they thought that. Yeah, I, yeah, I, and I, I mean that without any humor at all. I mean, I really do oh, yeah, think yeah. they thought they were. Correctly licensed. Well, it's a little arcane, the whole thing. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. Um, Steve Perlin I don't know. said... It was weird, though. We, we kept asking them, how are you guys doing this? Is this, this legal? Right. And they kept saying, we aren't talking about how we're licensing it. So, uh, you, so it makes maybe, me kind of go, hmm, maybe they, they kind of knew. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, he said, that, uh, he told uh, Brian Madden that, they, that we have a lot of licensing experts in the company. It's fine. <laughs> We know that you are it's a licensing fine. expert, but we have other licensing we, experts. Yeah, we know. And uh, our experts tell us that we know fine. what's going on. 
Anyway. I guess the, the theory is if you buy enough of something from Microsoft, they'll stop looking. You know, <laughs> like that's just, yeah. uh, well, they did buy, they bought something. They must be, they must be doing something right. You know? And there are, uh, as you as you said, it's the resellers who are uh, up in arms. One well, because them, they couldn't do the same Because they couldn't right? do it. One of them right. says, he told the register, his guy's name is uh, Guy's Bull of uh, VDI Consultancy 2 Cloud. He says, we're not completely convinced. We think they may have skinned Windows 7 to make it look like Server 2008. Oh, dear God, stop. Oh, that's, no. That, that's, <laughs> wow. That's wow. awesome. Uh, <laughs> that, that seems going a little far. I can't. I'm not sure I buy that. Um, finally, let's talk about Microsoft buying AOL patents. We, I, You guys are more expert on this, and so I'm glad I can ask you about it. They bought almost a billion dollars worth of patents from AOL. If, if there's anything harder to understand than Microsoft licensing, it may in fact be software patents. <laughs> you know, it's kind of a weird footnote is they also bought a small division of AOL, unnamed it's Netscape. This is Netscape, yeah. They bought Netscape. You know, do you think they'll have a ceremonial <laughs> destruction of this in Microsoft? Like, we've been waiting three decades for that, or two decades. I can, for I can only imagine Mark Andreessen when he heard this, because it, I remember... Uh, what when was I, that thing about a buggy device driver, you prick? <laughs> you know? Exactly. <laughs> you, know, you know? I remember uh, in 1996 when IE3 came out, I did an editorial on MSNBC saying, it's over for Netscape. Microsoft has a great browser, finally. Uh, you know, sell your Netscape stock. And I remember Mark Andreessen, I was told later, came screaming down the hall and said, who is this ass? Why is he saying this about it? And, there's, and I was right, because their stock tanked and Microsoft won. And now Microsoft owns Netscape. Oh, the good old days. <laughs> yeah, nobody remember cares. That Windows, remember that funeral procession with Windows 7 people uh, burying the iPhone? Yeah. Maybe they're going to do that with the Netscape da, 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 da. Now, here's my question to you guys. Um, I don't. First of all, what so many of these patents are about to expire? They're kind of. Uh, it's kind of a funky portfolio. Yeah, Is right. it worth that much money? And why did Microsoft buy it? And here's my conspiracy theory: Microsoft, which is a small but significant stakeholder in Facebook, and I have to assume as an ally of Facebook, might have bought these really on behalf of Facebook in their fight against Yahoo. Mm. That's interesting. Oh, I don't know about. Oh that. wow, I didn't even thought of that angle of it, but. <laughs> well, I'm, you well, know, I know you're thinking, though. This has got a nice it's John good, LeCarre it? feel yeah, to it. It does. I know. Um, it does. <laughs> Tinker's Taylor Soldier I mean, browser, I, yeah. Uh, the mysterious bit of this to me is that these patents were literally just valued at one-third of what Microsoft paid for them. So there's something clearly, going on. I don't know if they just wanted to get them out of circulation or make sure they didn't fall into any, anyone else's hands, uh, the other party being one of those companies like Motorola Mobility that... Right. Maybe Google, uh, was AKA doing the wrong Google. thing with patents yeah. and so forth. Yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised if that's all it was. Yeah. Uh, oh, well, you know, AOL was shopping these around too, and um, there yeah. was there was speculation Microsoft I and mean, Google were going to go head to head and bid on it. But right. I, th I think it was Jay Green at, at News dot com who who asked around and he he heard Google never even bid on them in the end. Yeah. Um, so you know, it could have been Microsoft. It was literally an auction, right? They had a an yeah. auction. Yeah, I think it was. So, so maybe it's one of you know, you know, you go to an auction and you overbid for something, and then you're like, wait, yeah. how much did I pay for this? Microsoft was drunk. Yeah. They had the paddle. <laughs> they didn't realize they were, like, bidding against themselves. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> right. Yeah, they had a guy across the room. They had Balmer on one side and mm -hmm. Steven Sanofsky on their side. Little tipsy. They kept raising the paddle. I, There's know, two reasons you buy patents these days. Not, uh, one of them not being to make something. <laughs> not, none of them, and none of those reasons are not evil. <laughs> yeah, but please, yeah. Go so one is offensive, one is defensive. It has to do with lawsuits, obviously. Is this an offensive or a defensive purchase? I think. I think defensive. it's like mutually assured destruction, right? Which like, makes it defensive. Yeah. Right. We yeah. have them, so now Stay away. We, nobody's going to yeah. be able to go at us with and, them. And I think just, I think they yeah. could. They can. They. I think Facebook can use these now. I think this makes it. Uh, this is, you know, Facebook is is really taking this Yahoo lawsuit seriously. They countersued. They're being very aggressive. This is a big deal for them. They're incensed by it. And I can yeah. see them uh, saying, hey, Well, Microsoft. the indignity of the timing, right? I mean, Yahoo did this specifically yeah, they're dying. in the build-up to their IPO so that yeah. they could... They, I, I think yeah. the assumption was Facebook would just pay to make yeah. this go away. And Facebook said, no, baby, yeah. we're going to court. <laughs> Um, and I can see them enlisting Microsoft. Microsoft has what seven, eight percent of uh, of Facebook. Yeah, but I, I don't I know. Like, I, you know, it's interesting that you draw such a close parallel between those two companies. Well, I, I, I know, don't know. I know they're frenemies. 
Yeah. Are there more friends um, than enemies these days? Aren't no, they? absolutely. No, they are friends, but that's not really what I mean. I, I just, I think of uh, Facebook as being far more independent than that. I, I, I'd be surprised if they were in that, that close in cahoots. Okay. You know? All right. Yeah, I, 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 well, no, when I first I just, heard about it's this, though, they, yeah, I, when I, when I first heard about it, I thought, okay, this is something they're going to use to go after more of the Android vendors ah. and try to get ransom from them. Don't they you have know, them like, all okay, though? Now we have these. They don't have them all. They have they have the majority of them, right. but they still don't have Barnes and Noble, right? And they don't have Motor, Motorola, okay. obviously. Okay. Um, so. So the other, the other billion dollar acquisition, and there's not much to say, but uh, I just, you know, I can't leave it out because it's the story of the year probably, is this little, is it, somebody tweeted me, wait a minute, <laughs> Facebook paid a billion dollars for Instagram? Don't they know they can get it free on the uh, on the app store? Oh my God, I can't, tell me about it. <laughs> and, and, you know, no, no offense to Instagram, I mean, neat idea and everything two years ago, but um, like, let me get this straight, so... You apply filters to photos that you took on your phone, and then you share them over other people's social networks. Yeah. Um, <laughs> wow. That's that, strong. That, that wouldn't be hard to uh, copy. I wonder if anyone has. Oh, look, there are 100 Instagram type right. apps in the app. That's right. Like, I, it just doesn't uh, – this purchase makes zero sense. It would, this is like uh, – did he get drunk at 3 o'clock in the morning and call him up and offer him a million dollars and then – well, didn't the, remember it the next day, but had to go through with it. I, it doesn't it's, make any it's sense. It's a punchline to a riddle. Why did Mark Zuckerberg buy Instagram? Because he could. Yeah, he's got it's the money. Bizarre. It, it reminds me of Microsoft's purchase of Skype, right? Except that Microsoft actually got something out of that. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> you know, I'll tell you what it reminds me of. Uh, Mark Cuban and AOL. It reminds me of yeah. AOL spending a billion, almost, it was a billion dollars, Mark wasn't it? Mark Cuban and Lamar Odom is an even better example. <laughs> For broadcast. just as much out of Lamar Odom that they're going to get out of Instagram. Right? Well, and like, actually, Lamar just... costs more, probably. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. Um, there's, there's another weird Facebook connection here, though, too, right? Because um, Microsoft and Facebook. So, you know, Instagram is not available on Windows Phone. Right. And it's one of the apps Microsoft's really lamenting has never yes. come to Windows Phone. Yes. So who knows? Maybe there's a little nice upside there, for Microsoft yeah. here. There right? has been talk about that, you know, uh, that Microsoft's uh, close relationship I'll with I'll make Facebook. you a deal. If you buy those AOL yeah. patents, <laughs> I'll buy Instagram and we'll trade. Leo, they are exactly the same amount of money. Coincidence? Coincidence? Hey. I think not. <laughs> okay. Next week, oh, the news just in. <laughs> Instagram has been traded to Microsoft for a thousand patents and a player to be named later. <laughs> yes, and a, tra a draft pick. We don't even know what that means. We don't know what is it. What it's is like it? some some graduate of the class of 2015. That's right. He's a computer yeah. science student, a freshman at Carnegie Mellon. We think he's the next Bill Gates. He signed on with Google, but sorry, we traded away that draft pick. <laughs> Um, no, I, I have to tell I have to tell Paul this though because it's a little Massachusetts angle too. My okay. mom emailed me this today. One of the founders of Instagram is from Holliston. Oh man! <laughs> well, my mom's like, check the local paper. Local boy like, wow, makes my mom's good. <laughs> Kevin's like, sister, do, you know, uh, do you know him? <laughs> yes, yes, there are only eleven hundred people in, in Holliston. Is a small I town. <laughs> I know most of them. Uh, Kevin Systrom, who's the founder, got four hundred million in cash and stock. Four hundred million for for fifteen months' work. But you know, with all Duke, I mean, I got to give him some credit. This is a beautifully designed app. It it works perfectly. Its uh, its functionality is exactly what you want. Um, it's got thirty million perfectly. users, and with Android, it might who knows, it might be twice that soon. Yep. Um, Ten, tens of millions, certainly. Legitimately, I mean, though, I mean, to be honest, uh, almost all of those 30 million are already Facebook users who probably use Instagram to post to Facebook. I know, it's, it's nuts. And by the so way, the ones, new that users. Weren't, right. the ones that weren't are quitting Instagram because they, they hate, hate Facebook. Exactly. You know, it's, it's, it's nuts. It would be like Microsoft buying Apple 10 years ago and being confused. Why, right. why are they going elsewhere? Right. I, I thought they would have embraced us. You know, it, it, it's, it's, the whole thing is nuts. I, it makes no sense at all. I have yet to read anything that makes this make sense. <laughs> there've been a, it's a, there's been a lot of ink spilled trying to make sense of this. Actually, every every pundit has c come up with a theory. Most of them cockamamie. We're going to take a break. Come back. We've got uh, your tip of the week, Paul. Which, uh, if you're getting in Lomeo 900, you're going to want to listen to your software pick of the week. Uh, we have an enterprise pick of the week, and our code name pick of the week is more than just some festival in Utah, my friends. <laughs> <laughs> Mary Jo wrote that. I didn't write that. 
Uh, but <laughs> you didn't write it like that. Well, I, know. <laughs> I added my own je ne sais quoi. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Hover.com, and then we shall continue on with the program and our fine hosts. Uh, you are, you know, look, I think there's nobody who uh, is techie who hasn't from time to time registered a domain saying, I, this is going to be the next big thing, or I'm going to start a business, and, you know. How many domains do, do many of us have hundreds of domains that, you know, I get emails now almost every day saying your domain is expiring and I'm saying I bought fancypants.com. Why? Wouldn't it be nice if there were a domain name registrar that would refund you the money you spent on your clunker domain? There is one. Wouldn't it be nice if there were a domain name registrar that didn't make you click a hundred times before you could check out, trying to sell you everything from life insurance to a condo in Maui? Wouldn't that be nice? There is. Wouldn't it be nice to find a domain name registrar that's clean, simple, and effective and, and won't put you on hold when you call for tech support? It's Hover.com. I want you to go to windows.hover.com and take a look at what is absolutely the best domain registrar out there for a couple of reasons. Um, I'll give you a few. If you're going to transfer a domain, by the way, they charge you 10 bucks. This isn't going to last forever, so do it now if you're transferring a domain. But you get for your 10 bucks another year, no matter what domain. You're getting another year. So now you're a Hover customer. You get all the benefits of their great management system, uh, the great support, and it, you get an extra year for $10. And and I don't. this isn't in the ad, but I, I know that they will do this for you if you tell them Leo told you about this. Call the number at Hover.com. Go to windows.hover.com. There's a number up there. And say, I want the domain concierge service, and I don't want to pay for it. And they will waive the $25 fee. They will move you. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me. I know from bitter experience. Let them move you. It's so much easier. that It just happens. They say, great. Give me the names of your domain. Your registrar will handle this, and they move it all over for you. Uh, really is nice. Uh, that's a luxury service. And they're going to waive the fee if you mentioned that I told them you would. I think that still works. They also have a no-hold policy, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern during their regular service hours. If you Once you get that live person, they won't put you on hold. And I hear nothing but praise for their great customer service reps. Finally, uh, let's talk about this clunker domain and this uh, premium domain, which is really, really cool. So fancypants.com. Say you say you go there and you want to oh you want to register fancy pants doc did I I typed dot com I probably shouldn't oh no they did it so it turns out that here you know it's taken and it, but if it's for sale or a similar name is for sale fr through hover they'll put a little star next to it that's a premium domain name the price is set by the seller before you inquire which means you're not going to get you know inflationary prices ms fancy pants just 350 bucks how about that fancy pants man that's a little more expensive he wants 14 grand for it so this is nice because you can sell your fancy babes.com just 500 bucks yeah yeah so look for the stars those are domains that are all owned but available for sale at a pre-negotiated price and of course the clunker domain trade-in means you could get a credit for everything you spend on your clunker with Hover, the original registration fees, any renewal fees, trade in that old domain, buy a custom fancy domain. And if you're, if you're getting a domain that is not a premium domain, you get 10% off on that new domain if you use the offer code Windows. So there's one more reason to use Hover.com. Windows.Hover.com, domain name registration and management made simple. I'm big, big big fan. All right, let's get our tip of the week starting with Mr. Polly Therat there. You know, back in the Windows Mobile days, go figure, we actually had this great service called My Phone that would back up all of the stuff on your phone and then you could restore it. It was great. It worked really well. Uh, obviously, on the Apple side, they have uh, iCloud, which does a lot of the same kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, it'll take a year, and, but it does restore over the year. But it does, yeah. Yep. It's nice. Yep. It's nice to have. Yeah, know? it's great. Um, yeah. yeah, Windows Phone has nothing like this, nothing. And so one of the tragic things uh, as you move from one Windows Phone to another or just move to Windows Phone is that carrying stuff over, aside from a few small things, you know, if you have some, if you have like an older phone that where you would store your contacts on a, on a SIM, on the SIM card, um, <laughs> How many? You know, I, do I know, people still know, do that? <laughs> no, but if you do, if you have such a phone, that will, you can carry yeah, those a in. A few anyway, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
So I sort of looked at this. I, I, I didn't go through the entire list of things that were possible, but I did go through a list of things, uh, a list of things that I go through when I, when I go through a new phone. So for example, um, I organize my start screen in a certain way. I install certain apps. I always get rid of certain apps, you know, in the same way that, uh, you know, you buy a new PC and there's crapper on there. You delete a bunch of that stuff before you move on. And, and I do the same thing on Windows Phone. Unfortunately, there's a bunch of AT&T apps that I uninstall mm -hmm. right away that I, I can And you can, huh? You're allowed to do that. Yeah, but I, I, one That's of the nice. neat things about Windows Phone when you buy it is that, uh, and they did this for me in the store, which I was really kind of surprised by, um, you input your account. You know, if you do have that Windows Live ID, all this stuff comes up into the phone automatically. Um, I had previously associated my Twitter account, so I didn't have to log into Twitter. That was already done for me automatically. All my contacts, my calendar items, my email, uh, you know, my Xbox Live uh, gamer tag, my Zoom stuff, all that stuff came in automatically. So that, that's really neat. But there's a bunch of stuff you have to do beyond that that's really uh, mostly a manual process, you know, reinstalling apps. Microsoft has a, uh, a website you can visit where you can see all the apps you've ever downloaded or purchased, and you can send them to the new phone. So that, that works pretty well. Um, but a bunch of the stuff that you have to do, you know, unfortunately, you kind of have to do by yourself. So I, I have a, an, an article that highlights all that stuff up on the website. But the important bit to understand, I think, unfortunately, is that some stuff is just never going to come through, at least not for now. And hopefully sometime in the future, this will be solved either by improvements in the platform, say in Windows Phone 8, or perhaps by third parties. So, for example, I'm not aware of any method uh, that works reliably where you can bring text messages from one phone to the other. Um, your history list in the phone, you know, for example, for phone calls or people you've interacted with, that stuff doesn't come through. The, the most tragic bit of it, unfortunately, is probably uh, app settings or uh, like if you think about a game where you might have gotten to a certain level in a game or you have a certain high score or whatever it is, uh, unless the that specific app maker, maker kind of tied that stuff into an online service on their own. Like Evernote no or something to, like that, yeah. Yeah, there's no way to carry that over. So. You know, I know uh, Rafael Rivera, for example, is working on a, a backup app of his own. And it, it, like so many good software programs, it was designed to solve a problem that he was having, right. which was that he had Plants vs. Zombies on one machine and he really Ooh, wanted to bring over Yeah, you don't want to start that, that game over. And yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's, a, just, it's unfortunate where the platform is right now that a lot of this stuff is just not possible, unfortunately. So, um, anyway, I have a write-up about all that. So it's just, it's just something to... Um, to know about, you know, if you're going to be moving to Windows Phone, or in this case, moving to a new Windows Phone, such as with the uh, with the Lumia 900. Yeah, that's nice. I have to say, and I do. It would be nice to have some way of because of, uh, a phone, even more than a PC. I mean, certainly a PC, you customize the heck out of it. But a phone yeah. is so it, personal that you really want it yeah. to look the I and know. you know, especially with a phone. Yeah, there, there, there's some hope in Windows Phone 8 that some of this will be solved because you know, if you looked at Windows 8, you know that. Uh, Microsoft does a really good job of PC to PC uh, settings sync through your Windows Live account, and um, in fact, it works even better than you would think. There's weird stuff. I I increased the size of the mouse cursor, you know, the little arrow, uh, on one machine because it was a very high res machine on a slightly smaller display. And then I was surprised when I moved over to my desktop PC that that's one of the things that gets synced across. So it's not just the the Metro settings. If you do something like um, move the taskbar to the side of the screen from the bottom. That gets synced across machines too. So uh, once you see that kind of capability occurring on the desktop and you know that Windows Phone 8 is going to be based on Windows 8, there's some hope, uh, although I don't know this for a fact, that some of that type of stuff um, will start being synced across on the phone as well. So tell me about oh. Raphael's program. Is he going to make that? Is he going to offer that? Uh, we'll see. You know, it, it's, and they'll uh, back up everything? We'll see. I can't really awesome. say. I mean, there's great. some... There's some uh, underlying platform issues that have to be overcome uh, mm -hmm. for this stuff to work. But, but I, they're saying in the chat room that there, that, uh, there is uh, isolated storage right for Windows Phone 7 that you could just copy. Well, yeah, so the problem with Windows, there's a lot of problems. I okay. mean, what would you, <laughs> a, you, would need, you would need native code uh, right. access. Right. You would need the ability right. they to... They may not allow that, yeah. Microsoft yeah. may literally just not allow it. There's a sandboxing thing that occurs in Windows 8, uh, Windows Phone rather, I'm sorry, where you, also on Windows 8, but where you, you can't from the device itself get into another app um, natively. So, or uh, using the default uh, APIs and so forth. So, the, the, like I said, there's a, there's a lot to overcome and, um, you know, we'll see. But 
And, and there's some hope that some of this stuff will occur uh, natively in the platform itself, either in Windows Phone 8 or in some future release or whatever. Uh, you know, okay, that was our tip. Now our software of the week. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, it, it strikes me that with all of the weird arguments uh, against Windows Phone lately with the Lumia, a lot of people looking for the kind of the downside of this stuff. Um, you know, one of the arguments that I just don't agree with is this lack of apps, you know. And aside from the sheer number of apps, I mean, 80,000 apps, which I, I know does not meet the 500,000 mark or whatever it is that the iP iPhone is at. Um, I, I, when I think of apps and the types of things I do on a phone personally, I mean, everything that I need is on Windows Phone. But and There's even just a few things. things. There's a f like Instagram. It's it depends well, if you've okay, a, but a, I was gonna, created actually, an attachment. Actually, Instagram, Instagram is a great example. So... There is no official Instagram app right. for Windows Phone, but there are several Instagram alikes. You know, um, yeah, but there is that, no official... if you want to be in that community, that's not the same. Okay, but but if, if what you really want is that capability and right. you want to share it on Facebook, you can do that. Well, I like right this because you you've got a blog here, and one of the, one of the things. Okay, so you can't get cut the rope, but you can get burn the rope. <laughs> okay, I'm okay. not actually sure if it's the same. They're not, but yes, yeah, <laughs> but it's similar, similar. So it's one of those things yeah. where it's like. Uh, you can't get the one I, you want. Well, no, but you can't. No, but oftentimes you can. Most of the time, I mean, you I, can. I, yeah, I so, agree. for example, for when I think of like tier one type apps, you know, like you Amazon have, Kindles on there. You got Audible Kindle, you got coming. Evernote. You're getting Audible, Facebook, Twitter, yeah, yeah. Evernote. Those things. You know, yeah. Obviously, the office of ESPN's on there. Netflix is on there. Um, I think it comes down to if there is a particular program. Yeah. But but you can't make a blanket statement. But the, you know, believe me, we lived in this world for years as Mac users. Right. And actually, this is, my, this is what I find interesting about this, because the types of people who would be touting the uh, iPhone's app advantage today are the types of people who just two or three years ago would <laughs> have been the saying, thing. <laughs> app count doesn't mean anything. It's quality. It's we quality. have plenty of great it's apps. It's what you've got, Mac. not how. Have, yeah. And talk about alternatives. Right. You know, like we, okay, we don't, we don't have a, a, you know, we don't have this, but we have this thing that was right. made by a guy in New Hampshire. Right. It was great. Exactly. You know, so, I mean, I, I, okay, so now I'm on the other side of the fence. And, uh, but, I actually use Windows Phone and prefer it. And I have to say, I've never really run into any huge instance. I mean, Audible maybe would be the best example of one kind of a blocker for certain people, although I actually uh, doubt that that is going to amount in any huge amount of people moving to Windows Phone once that appears. I mean, it, it, I think it's an interesting argument from people. Like, I would have gone to Windows Phone by now if Audible was on there. And it's like, that's nice. But I don't, I don't really think that's a, a huge blocker. But... I got you. Like the New York Times is on here. USA Today is right, on here. Right. Um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. The so key, the key big apps are absolutely. Yeah, I think so. And I, I, I would like that not to be part of the conversation because I think in the world of valid and invalid arguments about Windows Phone, yeah, you know, the apps are not really, for the most part, that valid of an argument. In the same way that it not having a dual core processor is not a valid argument because this OS right. doesn't require one. Boy, it is um, snappy. The Lumia 900 is so yeah. snappy. You absolutely don't feel in any way that it's slow. No. Yeah. No, not at all. It's really nice. The other thing that's neat about the Lumia, not that this is on topic with my software pick of the week theme, but is that, you know, when I got the Galaxy Nexus phone, you know, one of the things you notice with that phone is if you leave LTE on in that thing, the battery goes away oh, yeah. in front of you as you're using oh, yeah. it. It's you like driving it. a 70s station wagon up a hill and watching <laughs> the gas go down. Yeah. yeah. The, this thing... I mean, aside from when you're tethering, when, of course, you know, the, the data suckage occurs at an alarming rate. I mean, you leave your LTE on in this thing, and it's it's fine. It goes all day. It's I, I, I'm amazed by that, you know? Yeah. So, so I don't you, think, the, I, I don't you, think you have a link to the uh, Windows Steam blog dot com. This is a gaming blog for Windows Phone. What what do I have? It's, I'm really? just looking at your notes. I, I'm sorry. I, I thought... Your favorite. The wrong? Here are the apps I use every day. Plus, get key Windows Phone games for just ninety nine cents. So I have a, a Did link. Did you not to write the, that? <laughs> I have a link to the Windows Phone blog. It no, came out something different for me. Oh yeah, it says Windows Phone blog, but it, but the yeah, link no, is windowssteamblog dot com. That's weird. I don't know what that means, but certain, oh, Windows uh, Team. It's the Windows team. <laughs> <laughs> now I now I get it. It's Windows Team. I'm so, I'm so confused. Did I send you to a porn site, Leo? Windows I'm sorry. Steam. No, window <laughs> Windows Steam blog or Windows Team blog. You know. Yeah, I mean, if you do have Windows Phone and you haven't bought any of these games, they're ninety nine cents right now. So that's kind of an incredible deal. That is a great deal. Angry Birds. Yeah. Burn the Rope. Doodle God is fun. I like that. Ion Ball X. Max and the Magic Marker. Toy Soldiers. So there's a bunch of them. Yeah. 
I think it's funny that they call burn the rope mega hits. It's it's not the same. It's it's not birds. It's like saying it's just like a, you know, it's like saying a cranky birds. Hey, they've got cranky birds. Cranky birds, yes, yeah. yes, yes. No, they're that's not quite the same as cut the rope. But that's you know, it's the same game, frankly. Sure. So go for it. Uh, I, you know, I don't I don't spend a lot of time playing games no. on phones personally, but no. I, honestly, if game playing was your forte, I don't feel that Windows Phone is a particularly bad platform. Either. No, if you're an Xbox yeah. player, if you're Xbox Live awesome, user, phew, yeah. you're set. Yep. Um, Enterprise pick of the week, Mary Jo Foley? Yes. First, could I do one breaking news item? It's in. It's hot. It's It's flash. It is. Verizon has started rolling out the update, Woo-hoo! the disappearing keyboard update for oh, the trophies. They, they were listening. Oh. WP Central's on this, and they say if you hook your phone up to the Zoom client, you'll get OS 7740, the 8107 fix for disappearing keyboard, and some firmware. Yay. So finally, it's out. Yay. But not for all phones, just for the... Now uh, after just one more Verizon year, maybe they'll users. release a new phone. Right. But Verizon's yeah. doing it for their users. Yep. Cool. Yeah, so that was just a quick aside since we've done so much that's Windows Phone one. stuff. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, yep. that's good. Yeah. Okay, Enterprise Pick of the Week. So next week in Las Vegas, all the people who are in the know about Microsoft System Center will be converging to talk at Microsoft Management Summit 2012. So my Pick of the Week is System Center 2012. And most people who know what MMS is, know what System Center is, but it's a, it's a collection of eight different apps that Microsoft's now bundling in only two SKUs. So before you used to, used to buy all these apps separately and license them separately, and now you're going to have a choice of a standard edition of System Center 2012 or a data center edition. And these have actually already RTM, though Microsoft wanted to try to save that news for next week um, and not announce that they were available, but people already have been um, downloading them and installing them. So that that's going to be the big news next week is System Center 2012 is out and here's what you can do with it and here's why it's cool. Um, and what Microsoft's going to do to add a, an element of levity to this is they're resurrecting this polyester spokes guy <laughs> named Tad, um, which many people hate, but some people love. And I gave Leo a link there if I you want to look Tad at the talks. Tad. Tad I don't talks. know why he has the Atari logo behind him. But I was just going to say exactly the same <laughs> thing. Because he's a throwback. He's, he's supposed to be VMware. All right. Can we, can, should I play a little bit? Can we hear, can we hear what he... Uh... Yeah, you can. We can unleash the full scope of human potential. Thank you. So these are like a play on TED Talks, only it's... Great. Tad. He sails the Numero Uno at VM Limited. You're going to do great. He's Purple Belt Numero Uno in his community dojo. He's rad. He's bad. Thank you. Please. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they Thank spent some money so on this much. one. Oh, Progress. Boy. It may not be quite as groovy as you all think it is. Boom. <laughs> the hidden bummers of going <laughs> he's got too a, far he's got beyond a opaque virtualization. Overhead projector. My talks are 30% brain tinglers. Mucho negative vibos. 30% spectacle. Costume change. 10% cloud. And 30% positive vibes. And that makes it 110% VM limited, baby. So this is, is this, are they mocking VMware? Is that what they're doing? Yeah, yeah. they are. They're saying it's, it's, a, it's a throwback. Right. Yeah. You know, because at, at, at Microsoft Management Summit, Hyper-V and virtualization, those are all big topics. So, you know, who's their key competitor in the space? VMware. Right. So yeah. they're t- taking some pot shots there. They do have TAD it's- wallpapers. You might want to check that out. <laughs> I, I bet there's going to be Tad bubble, bobblehead dolls and uh, everything else. Oh, and Tad, Tad's destined to get um, some play next week. I wonder I what bet. my uh, staff would say if we just put this on our wallpaper on all of our computers. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee you this guy comes out on stage next week. Oh, yeah. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I, you know, I, I think in person this would be awesome. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Here's and a, you got to make this stuff fun. It's on this guy. <laughs> now, yeah, yeah. he looks just like Bill Gates did, so I'm not sure. But anyway, I'm just saying. But that was the same. Actually, um, who was the guy who played George W. Bush and, and W? What was it? Uh, Bro- Brolin? Um, Josh Brolin? Josh Brolin. He does look like Josh Brolin. He looks like him, doesn't he? Yeah, you're right. He's, well, it's the Brolin. <laughs> he's got the bro Yeah, the Brolin handlebar mustache. Mustache, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, that's, are you going to that, Mary Jo? 
Uh, no, I am going to watch that from home because I oh, love Las Vegas so much. Ugh. You know, it's funny because yeah. I'm going to we're going to be in Las Vegas next week for the oh, uh, yeah, NAB, right? NAB show, yep. the big National Association yep. of Broadcasters, Monday through Thursday. So I guess we're going to run into Tad. If if I can get Tad, you know, we're looking for somebody, some big name, somebody, a big thinker, a big, big talker for our mm-hmm. triangulation show, or, which is our kind of uh, premier uh, interview mm-hmm. show. If I can get Tad for that. I'll, go. I'll ask him if you want. You want me to ask? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That would be hilarious, actually. If Tad came by, I think most of our audience would Tad be completely nonplussed, but some of them would get it. It'd be fun. <laughs> Tad should come by. Tad should come by in his leisure suit, the whole thing. I love the costume change. <laughs> it goes from one vest to, an, to another vest. <laughs> Your code name pick of the week, and we ain't talking skiing here, Mary Jo. No, we're not. Even though it's Park City, we're not talking skiing. Um So first I'll tell you why it's Park City, which is kind of weird and kind of interesting. So Microsoft has a big division in Utah, in Lehigh, Utah. And that's where they do what they call the Microsoft, let's see, it's an acronym, MDOP, Microsoft Desktop Optimization Pack. It's a collection of utilities and tools for uh, business users to make their life easier with Windows. And so a big part of that team works in Lehigh, Utah. So they're adding a new component to this pack. um, And so they codenamed it Park City. Probably not a coincidence. Um, The real name of it is User Experience Virtualization. So Park City is way more fun than UEV. Um, So UEV is coming to MDOP, if you really want all your acronyms in one sentence. (laughs) Um, And I'll tell you what UEV is. I have to read this because it's somewhat complicated. UEV is a user state virtualization product that allows individuals to change devices without reconfiguring applications or settings in Windows 7 or in Windows 8. Just what you're talking about. If they made that for Windows Phone, we'd be set. (laughs) I know, right? Yeah. Yeah. So this is for Windows 7 or Windows 8. Um, uh, It's out in beta now. Uh, we don't know when it's going to be out in final form, but that's that's what Park City is, and cool. you can go download it now. I mean, I th- I think that all someday all computers will just do that. You you log yeah. in to right. whatever yep. wherever whatever hardware you're on, and you will have your environment. Yeah. No, the consumer version is what they're doing in Windows 8. Right, you know, it's the yeah. sync it through Windows Live. Right, right. This is right. the the thing Mary Jo's talking about is the enterprise version. Right, right. This is a, so if you're a software assurance user, you know somebody who licenses through volume contracts and has software assurance, you'll get this as part of your software assurance subscription. If you don't, then you're probably not going to be able to get it. If you're a software yeah. assurance subscriber, you probably religiously read <laughs> all about Microsoft.com. It's that kind of a blog. <laughs> <laughs> Mary Jo Foley's it responsible. <laughs> it's her fault. All about Microsoft.com. It's the place to go to keep up on your, to fulfill your Microsoft needs, all of the things we talk about on the show, and, and a good deal more uh, right there. It is really a great tip sheet for people who are interested in following, uh, following this, especially enterprise, but any form uh, of Microsoft, except when it comes to Xbox. And for Ooh. that... <laughs> We go to Paul well, Theron's. This is <laughs> right. The reason I exist. <laughs> Xbox and Windows Phone. I don't think Mary J. She has some Windows. She's got some Windows Phone stuff. No, she does, sure, she, she does. Windows. I, do. I think she kind of leaves the Xbox to the experts, though. I do. Yep. <laughs> yep. 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 Paul Theron's uh, blog is the super site for Windows. Winsupersite.com. Between the two of them, there will not be a bit of Microsoft news you are not up on. And of course, if you listen to the show, you'll know even more and you'll get to meet them as people. You could do that by going to. <laughs> we will literally come into your home and cook you dinner. Home invasion, you bet. Uh, they uh, they are here every Thursday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 UTC. And you can watch live, chat along with us, uh, give us your feedback. I have I am working on, and I'm going to see a demo of it today, I think. Mm-hmm. A uh, new way that we could take live calls during the show, if you guys would be interested. Oh my in goodness! That. I think that'd be fun. That'd be fun. That'd I want to integrate fun. this into all of our shows because I, you know, you were doing the chat room questions, and I want to keep doing that too. Uh, but I just love getting the interaction yeah. going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we'll, we'll like a radio show. Type yeah, thing. and we'll look at doing sure. that. Yeah. Um, next Thursday, uh, yeah, I'm back. I'm back from NAB, so we'll be on our regular time next Thursday. That's right. Thank you guys for uh, being here. You can, uh, of course, download a copy of this after the fact in the Zoom Marketplace or anywhere better podcasts are aggregated. Just look for Windows Weekly. Paul Farrat, Mary Joe Foley. I'm Leo Laporte. Thanks for being here. We'll see you next time on Windows Weekly.